Okay, Brinda Jagirdar, as uh, a senior economist and also the former chief economist of the SBI, which is a which is a huge public sector entity, I want to know from you uh, what you feel uh, about the problems and concerns being raised by many of these bankers or banking staff today. They say that it is these public sector banks who fund many of the welfare schemes, who help roll out many of the government's pro-poor welfare schemes. You can surely not expect from the private sector banks to do the same or have the same sort of muscle and might to be able to do this without, without profit being the motive. Sankit, let me just start by saying that the public sector banks have played a major role in expanding services, banking services to the look and for every nook and corner in the country, increasing deposits, dispensing credit, and expanding the presence of public se banking sector in the country, increasing domestic savings in the country. They've played a major role. But times have changed. Right from 1991, every single report from the Narsimhan Committee in 1991 to the Raghuram Rajan Committee in uh, uh, 2008, they've all talked about the banks to be privatized. Now, the government is not saying they're going to privatize all banks. As Mr. Gandhi has just explained, banks need capital to grow. And in a growing economy, you need banks which will support this growth, not only for banks, not only for corporates within the country, but our corporates are also becoming global. Remember, they're also going abroad. So when they expand, they also need uh, uh, big loans to be given to them. And we do not just loans, but also let's say letters of credit, bank guarantees. These are not accepted abroad by small banks. I mean, the small banks issuing letters of credit are really not uh, taken up uh, outside. So we need a big bank, we need a big lane, we need big, st big stability. Now, uh, look at the top 100 banks in the world, which is published by the banker. Where do you see Indian banks? The top 10 banks may be Chinese. So earlier it was Japanese dominated by Japanese banks and the American banks, and now the Chinese banks are dominating. Don't you think we as a country, which is going to become the third or fourth largest economy in the world, hmm. needs strong banks to support this? So some banks which are not very strong, they could be privatized. And privatization doesn't mean it's being thrown into the dustbin. The privatization means it's going to be really revived. Yeah. No, Ms. Jagindar, I think, I think after having spoken to a lot of these uh, uh, protesting banking staff, I think another point of concern was this ambiguity around this decision. Which bank? Which entity? You know, all of this is right now an enigma, a puzzle. Nobody knows. So do you think greater clarity will help uh, to a great extent allay in allaying these certainly, fears? Certainly, certainly greater clarity and greater explanation of the rationale for doing this definitely will help. And we talked about uh, rural justice, certainly public sector banks have played a major role in expanding credit, like I explained earlier, and even welfare schemes. So the Northeast, for example, is entirely because of public sector banks and uh, the development there. But now, you see, you have uh, MFIs coming in, you have NBFCs coming in. They're all going to rural areas. And because of technology, you really don't need a physical presence. You can do banking in any place. So therefore, I think now we need to look at options and alternatives. And uh, I think sure. that is more important. And perhaps, as you said, if the rationale is explained to the people, then maybe yeah, and, a and, and reality and understanding. Mr. Sabnavis, do you feel that that exactly is the problem? Uh, you know, it's a. It will be a complicated question for you to answer. But uh, would you would you see certain parallels uh, with with say a farm reform where the reform was brought in? Reforms are good, but perhaps not explained well. Perhaps had they been explained well, they would have, you know, cared to get some more feedback and draft it better. Well, actually, I think, uh, uh, Sanket, is that I don't think it's an issue of uh, explaining explaining to the bankers because I think this issue has been on the table for quite some time about privatization of public sector banks. And lots of people have actually argued saying that we need to have it because we need capital. And as what Mr. Gandhi was saying, the only way to get it if the government cannot fund it on a continuous basis is to privatize it. Now, if you look at the fears of the employees, I think it's palpable. I think it's realistic because we all know that Whenever there is a privatization or a takeover of one bank by the other, the first thing which happens is you start losing jobs. So whatever assurances are given, because we have seen that even when distressed banks are being bought by other banks, mm. the RBI has enabled, you're given a three-year clause saying that jobs are protected for three years, and after that, you're 
you're all on your own in in this job so therefore i think it's probably just kind of an explanation if there can be a guarantee given saying that everybody continues in service up to the age of 58 60 what would the terms of engagement work i think that will assure you too but because i think it's a major sacrifice which the government is actually doing because that's what brinda uh, was also saying is that public sector banks have done lots of work for the government of india okay for example look at jandhan to my mind i think it's a very uneconomical scheme for a bank to do it that's why private sector banks have not done it but public sector banks do it now just think of it in future when you have to run such kind of a welfare scheme you'll have one less bank which can do it okay so therefore i think the government has taken quite a few steps ahead to say that okay we are willing to say that we are we will release our hold on some of the public sector banks now you people get 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 together and start operating with more freedom so i think it's actually a win win situation but what you are saying is also true that probably if you have if there have been a discussion with uh, bankers but then how long can you have this discussion i think this is not a new issue saying that the government has sprung this surprise we have all been arguing and i think lots of the critics or economists who always felt that there is a need for one to get in some kind of privatization so that there is less interference coming from the government not a, when the government is doing it i think one one should take it in stride but as i said if i was an employee of a public sector bank i'll definitely be scared because there will be a case of uh, job loss at some point of time unless there's an assurance given yeah history shows that whenever banks are merged there is pain caused in terms of job absolutely uh